All right. And with Michaela's singing, that means we are back in the lobby bar for the week of July the 1st, 2024. Brian and Michaela here with you. And Michaela, we made it to July. That's pretty exciting. We we beat the sweltering heat of June, you know, just in time to get into the sweltering heat of July. But that's OK. We've got uh, a lot of fun things uh, planned uh, and ongoing. I'm traveling right now. I'm in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. I can look out my window. I see like a big pile of rocks you know some of it's red some of it's kind of like ashy looking it's very pretty very pretty here i've had some good cocktails uh you know that's good that's good um but since i was heading out of town you had to uh pick up a little bit of the load for the podcast for drink the movies and you went to our first ever podcast conference the empowered podcast conference how was that it was awesome it was very empowering in a word um it was really cool to see other people doing podcasts and like learning about all the different kind of things out there in podcast land. Um, I definitely learned that there there's so much uh, out there in terms of content and mm -hmm. learning about mm -hmm. content creation. And they had these really cool paths where you could do like the grow path or the storytelling path. And, and that was really neat because everybody who came to the podcast um, and this was in Charlotte, um, so it was local to us, but there were people there from all over the place. And that was really cool um, awesome. to hear their kind of calling to do the work that they were doing. Um, mm. Some were like political, some were like, you know, empowered stories and um, telling people's stories through different eyes. And um, some of them were inter more entertainment based like ours. It, it was really, really cool. Um, learned a lot of really cool stuff. As we all should know at this point, I am the oldest, youngest person uh, here. And I don't know how technology works. So I found it really mm, helpful to like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> learn how to use the technology uh, as your friend in uh, growing the, your business and getting the views you want and you know making sure you get the audience you want. It was just really empowering and cool and i was really grateful that we were able to be a part of that for the very first conference because this was the first mm -hmm. one um that they'd ever had so it was really cool yeah i was able to get to the uh, happy hour because that was the night before my wife and i left town and it, yeah it seemed like it was going to be awesome you know just uh, kind of bringing everyone together and you know learning a bit and talking to other people you know kind of you know trying to do the same thing that you're doing and in their own way. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, we had the happy hour. That was fun at a local uh, brewery in Charlotte. So I had a couple of good drinks there, but we need some other good drinks, Michaela, because it is, uh, it's coming up. It's 4th of July week here in the United States. Everyone's going to be, you know, shooting off their fireworks, having cookouts, you know, doing some swimming, uh, celebrating America, uh, you know, all those things that you do for 4th of July. So I was, I was looking through some recipes. I'm like, what should we do for the 4th of July? What would be good? And I came across an article from foodnetwork.com, which was uh, basically just a list. I think it was like 15 uh, 4th of July cocktails. Um, and there are two here that I wanted to highlight because one seems dead simple. It's going to be perfect uh, for the summer, perfect for your summer parties. And the other one is the most delicious thing I've ever heard of. Uh, I'm not home, so you're going to have to make this for me uh, for 4th of July. Let me know how it is. And then I'm going to make these every day for the rest of my life. So first, let's go with the Blue Lagoon. This is easy. One ounce of coconut rum, one ounce of blue curacao half ounce of lemon juice and a bar spoon of sugar or you could use a uh, simple syrup that's probably easier um on the recipe on the on the article they actually made like a batch of it so they made like six cocktails at once but you could just do one you know just some over some ice and then garnish it with a cherry pineapple wedge and orange slice uh it's perfect it's tropical it's very pool centric it's very blue you know so that's good blue lagoon what do you think about this one michaela um this is amazing uh it's very beautiful um and actually, um, I have pictures I need to send to you of this of this drink because it's actually really lovely. Um, I think that if you're into coconut, if you can handle the coconut, this is uh, really refreshing. It's very islandish. The cherry makes it really nice. Like it's this beautiful, I don't know. It's like, it's very red, white, and blue, but also very islandy, if that makes sense. Mm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Like the, like a Hawaiian Island, uh, potentially there, uh, keeping it, keeping it uh, to the States. Um, if coconut rum is not your jam and it's not my jam, uh, you could totally just swap that out with the silver. I do think that the, the coconut and the blue curacao are pretty good, like bedfellows in this cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm coming around a little bit on the uh, good old coconut rum. So uh, definitely one to give a try there. The other one, Michaela, you know, 4th of July, you're going to be cooking, right? Uh, might be kids running around, hamburgers, hot dogs, those kinds of things. You might be, uh, you know, smoking some wings or some ribs, you know, all of those uh, good old barbecue staples. You're going to have the grill fired up. So what you're going to do is you're going to take an orange and you're going to cut it into quarters. You're going to throw those quarters onto the onto the grill. You're going to char them up just for a couple of minutes, right? They're just going to get a little bit of char on them, a uh, little bit of, you know, a little bit of color there from the hot grill grates. Uh, you're going to take that out. You're going to squeeze that juice uh, into a glass with some ice. Go ahead and drop 
the uh, the orange in there. And then you're going to throw in two ounces of Campari and four ounces of tonic. Uh, it is a Campari tonic with grilled oranges. Uh, it says to garnish with an olive, which I love because it has this little bit of saline to it. So it's like a perfectly like Italian and refreshing Campari and tonic with a charred orange. Uh, my new favorite thing. I haven't even had it. Uh, just the description of it alone uh, told me all I needed to know. Yeah, no, this is definitely everything that is up your alley. The only thing that's missing is some gin um, to be like all of your favorite things because it's got Campari. It's got that uh, like the quinine-ness of the tonic. This is going to be, uh, yeah, your new best friend. Um, yeah. And it's going to be really beautiful, I imagine, with the grilled oranges. I can't wait to try this. Um, mm. I am going to go ahead and make this. Uh, I'm having a little get together at my house on 4th of July uh, for some fireworks. And I will be sure to take some pictures and let you know how this how this goes, because it looks uh, like it's going to be delicious. Although the olive, I don't know, man. It's we're just going to garnish it with an olive. We don't actually add olive juice to this, right? No, just 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 olive, just olive. It's going to be just a little briny, a little bit of like sea air uh, wafting over this uh, this Campari oh. tonic. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, it's going to be delicious. I promise. Um, you mentioned gin in this, which would be good as well if you wanted to do more of a full blown uh, kind of thing. It would be like a like a Negroni meets gin and tonic sort of a thing, uh, which sounds great. I actually really, really like the omission of the gin here because this is going to be a low uh, ABV cocktail, which is perfect for the summer, perfect for cookouts. You know, when you ha want to have a couple of cocktails, you know, throughout the day while you're getting those hamburgers and hot dogs going, you don't want anything uh, too crazy uh, there. So you'd be able to, you know, go slow here with a Campari and tonic little low ABV cocktail. So that one's going to be really good. And again, those come from Food Network. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the link to that in the uh, show notes down there. Uh, uh, what do we have box office wise this week, Michaela? Inside Out 2 is still doing gangbusters, $57.5 million, uh, beat out Quiet Place day one in its opening weekend, $53 million. Inside Out 2 is over a billion dollars now worldwide. So good job, everyone, checking out their emotions. Uh, I still need to get out and see this. I don't know if you've made it out to see it yet, uh, Michaela. Uh, we're definitely going to have to uh, go see it, but uh, haven't made it out yet. But here in the, you know, people, people love it, obviously, billion dollars worth. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've heard nothing but great things, uh, which is interesting because, you know, um, usually, I mean, I I didn't, I, it was hard for me to love the first one. I loved it, but it was so hard. Um, I'm kind of mm. dreading watching it because I don't want it to <laughs> this, end up being like be this emotional. Yeah. This is going to be way harder. I can feel it already. I mean, being a teenager was hard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> going to relive any of hard. that stuff is hard reliving it was hard so. yeah for sure for sure but yeah doing gangbusters uh, let us know out there if you've seen inside out too uh but inside out two's time in the sun is probably going to uh dim a little bit this week we've got a couple of new releases uh here michaela and it's actually it's going to uh, go up against the uh, quiet place day one too because we've got another one for the kids here despicable me uh part four grew and minions are back and we've also got maxine which i think is the follow-up to that uh horror film x uh, that is coming out as well that starred uh, Mia Goth. So we have both of those coming out. So you looking forward to uh, checking out what the Minions are up to? I have to say, not a Despicable Me, not a Minions fan myself, but the previews for this one look pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do with another child, right? Because the last mm -hmm. couple, it's just mm -hmm. been that mm -hmm. same kind of family union. Um, and so now that there's a there's a, there's a a little baby that, 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 that could be evil, I don't know. That seems kind of neat. Um the yeah. Maxine, uh, terrifying, um, scary. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Yeah, but Those I, pictures but of I'm, Mia Goth are scary. I think so. Yeah, they are. But I'm really excited about this Seven Samurai 70 anniversary in 4K business that's mm. coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea that it was the 70th anniversary of Seven Samurai. Um, there's a there's a bunch of references to this as being one of the greatest movies of all time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in in a bunch of film culture, so. Um, that's exciting. If you've not seen it, I think now is this, it's the summer to do it. I think. Yeah, for sure. It's going to look beautiful in 4k out celebrating its uh, 70th anniversary. Uh, Michaela, we've not ever covered Akira Kurosawa here on the podcast. We might have to rectify that to maybe seven samurai, uh, is the one to start with. I don't know. We'll have to, uh, have to think about that here as the year progresses. So get out and check that out. Check out Despicable Me 4, uh, check out Maxine. Um, and if you want to stay home, you know, stay in the air conditioning, you know, you got people coming around, you're not going to be able to make it out to the movies uh, this week. We've got a couple of things. We've got uh, fancy dance, which actually came out onto Apple uh, TV plus last week. That one stars, uh, Lily Gladstone's that one looks pretty good. And we've also got to Beverly Hills Cop Axel F uh, coming back to your screen on Netflix. Uh, that looks 
I don't know. It looks like it's going to be uh, pretty fun. But uh, I was looking through the list of people here. So you've got Judge Reinhold, of course. you got Kevin Bacon, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, you know, a bunch of uh, really good uh, actors here in this one coming together. Um, I, I love Eddie Murphy. I think he's hilarious and he's like very charismatic. So I think even if this is terrible, it's still going to be really fun to see, uh, you know, Axel back in action. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I'm really excited. Um, I wasn't, I think I was a little young for the first one uh, mm. when it first came out. So I remember, gosh, it was probably like mid 2000s when I kind of got on the train and started to watch these. Um, and so I'm excited to see them come back. I, I'm hoping that it's better than the last, um, oh my gosh, the last, like the Coming to America 2 that was mm. done, right? Like Oscar Eddie nominated. Murphy Andy, come on. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Eddie Murphy can, can be counted on. He is hilarious. I hope I hope that the rest of it kind of lives up to it because I, I agree. It's, it's either going to be awesome or awesomely bad. Either way, I'm going to watch it for sure. Absolutely. So uh, that's what you got coming out uh, onto your TV sets this week. So let us know if you check out either of those. Last week, Michaela, we had Pride uh, came out to celebrate the end of uh, Pride Month. Uh, really excellent uh, episode. Talk about a really, uh, you know, kind of under the radar film that's definitely worth everyone checking out. Uh, this week, we have another uh, kind of not not under the radar, but definitely a cult classic film. Our patrons voted and they picked Heathers. So we're going to have that coming out this week. So stay tuned for that. Um, speaking of Patreon, over on Patreon, we've got our, our votes that uh, just happened. We've also got our Mad Max bonus episode our uh hangouts are there if you want to go back and check those out in this month we're going to be talking about twister uh, uh like we said in our hangout uh unarguably one of the, the best films of all time very excited to talk about that as we look forward to twisters here later this month so uh michaela i'm looking out my window those sedona rocks are calling uh and campari tonic is calling too so what i what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to go track one of those down i'll just go into restaurants and you know say make this for me can you do that possible i don't know uh so we'll do that and we'll talk to everyone next week in the lobby bar <laughs>